Hello everybody and welcome back to Gaming on Caffeine, my name is Isaac and we're back playing some Crash Landing for episode 19 and last episode we set up this little automated or tripling system that we now have using our high oven and uh, basically for those who didn't see it, what happens is all of the dust that we get for pulverizing cobblestone into gravel, sand and then dust gets sifted through via the autonomous activator picked up by the vacuum hopper and dumped it to here and as you know we get little pieces of ore from sifting through dust which we then send via item ducts under this little black cobblestone road to this chest here and then using the auto packer we sort of like auto craft almost all, all of those little ores into their two by two block formation which then gets sent into the high oven like so which then gets smelted and tripled into a little liquid ingots which then automatically get pulled out by a fluid duct down by a hopper and again back up via item duct into this emmy chest and here they are so we do still have to pull out slag every so often as you can see i do have quite a bit of slag uh, so what i did is between this episode and last i kind of left this running for a little while uh, just pop back on every so often to drink some more water eat some more food and uh, basically what i did is i left it running so we got quite a few ores and i also took all of the little broken ores that we had in here so basically all of these like broken platinum broken lead broken iron we had like a ton of those from smelting all the gravel so i took all of those and using the hammer i turned them into the sand variant and then i turned them into the dust variant and then i put them in this chest and then they went through the whole system and now we have quite quite a lot of pretty much everything apart from bronze which we have to make by uh, by combining tin and copper so why why did i why did i leave it so long well that is because today we are going to do something that's going to make our lives so much easier and that is going to be to automate the production of these printed circuit boards not not these ones in particular but automate the production of taking these ones here and turning them into printed circuit boards because at the moment uh, if we have a look at this, this is just an empty PCB. We can't actually use this for anything apart from producing an unassembled PCB, which we can then we could use to make a, a printed circuit board and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Now that's kind of a pain because in order to do that, you've got to take it, you've got to put it in this UV light box, you've got to put it there, you've got to wait till it gets to a hundred. At the minute, it's at one out of a hundred. It takes like flipping forever to go through this and get to to a hundred. Then you've got to drop it in acid, wait five more minutes, then you got to come and use it for whatever you want. That takes a lot of time. And it's pretty slow and it's pretty tedious and i'm not a huge fan of doing it and the, the reality is oh i've, I've flipping messed it up now because it has two out of 100 but i'll, I'll keep all of that and the reality is we need all of these print, uh, printed circuit boards in order to get all of the machines uh, in order to do some really cool stuff so we need to find a way to do this a lot faster and a lot more efficiently and the way to do that is in the quest book right here we need to do these guys we need the assembly controller the assembly platform two assembly io units and an assembly laser and basically once we've got all these we can set them up in a certain orientation and all we got to do is put our empty circuit our empty pcbs into a chest and they will automatically pull them out etch losing a, a little cool laser animation and we will have ourselves an, an unassigned i think it is or what's the name precisely it's an unassembled pcb which is pretty flipping cool so how do we make this well this stuff's kind of really expensive <laughs> so we need an assembly controller which is three printed circuit boards in itself as well as some compressed iron and a pressure tube we need an assembly do we need an assembly laser i think we do uh, yeah, we need one assembly laser, which again is some more of these pneumatic cylinders, which is a more uh, compressed iron, and then this, which is even more compressed iron, and then we need two of these IO units, which is more uh, two hoppers, which is more iron, and then flipping more compressed iron, and even more compressed iron, and then we need one of these platforms, which is some uh, some plastic, uh, some pr another printed circuit boards, and a ton more compressed iron. So that's why I kind of let this running. I knew we were going to need a ton of of iron to start compressing. So. What I'm going to do, guys, is I'm going to eat some bread, and then what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to have to uh, go through and uh, uh, turn all these circuits into uh, printed circuit boards the manual way, because at the moment we don't have anywhere to do it. But as soon as I've done that, and as soon as I've got all the compressed iron and stuff that we need to do this thing, uh, including getting some uh, enough plastic, and I think we even need a new type of plastic, don't we? Like an orange plastic? We do, which is got from plant seeds, which is got from orange dye, which is just uh, yellow and red dye, which I think we should be able to do. So I'm going to go ahead and, uh, and do all that stuff, and I'll be back in a second once we have everything we need to start doing this. 
Okay, so what feels like forever later, we finally have ourselves the five printed circuit boards that we need. Uh, quite a bit of this blue plastic over here from the seeds, which I've like, I plant, I took them all up. I really need to replant some of these, but I'll do that in between episodes. So I think we now have everything we need to make all this stuff. So what I'm going to do, guys, is I'm going to go away again, and I'm just going to quickly make all this stuff here. I'll probably speed it up, because uh, you don't need to sit here and watch me just craft all this stuff. It's just a lot of uh, compressed iron and stuff. So yeah, I'm going to go do that, and I'll be back in a second. Okay, so I slightly miscalculated there just how much stuff we were going to need uh, in order to craft these guys, but I did it anyway. I went ahead and I made a flipping ton more printed circuit boards and everything else we needed. Uh, if you're wondering how to get dandelion yellow, all you got to do is bone meal grass over and over and over again until you get a yellow flower. I would then recommend pulverizing it because then you get four dandelion yellow instead of two, and uh, that's what I did with my rose red as well. You can then craft rose red and dandelion yellow together to get the orange dye, and then you can craft that with a grass seed to get these propulsion plant seeds which must be the hardest things to plant ever. Look at this. I'm going to stand all the way back here, and this thing will fly forever. Look at that. Jeez. And then flipping half the time, they just disappear. It's like, what the heck? But just flipping heck, I managed to do it. I managed to, I managed to get myself three of these uh, and managed to uh, turn them into plastic sheets, which is nice enough. And we finally have everything we need here. So if we head into the quest book, we can go to Under Pressure and we can claim this reward. We're almost done. 80% done on Under Pressure. Claim that reward gets us an assembly program laser, a compressed iron ingot, and some more redstone. Game sound seems a little low, so I'll just bump that up a little bit. And now what we need to do is move all this stuff for a second uh, out of our inventory. Let's grab all of these guys here. And you need to place them down something like this. So I believe it is IO unit, IO unit, um, platform, laser, controller. And then we also need two chests as well. So let me just grab some more wood from in here. Like so. We need one chest uh, that is going to pull the unassembled circuit boards from, and one that is going to take the assembled circuit boards to. So, we're going to put one, I think, we just have to have, like, one uh, here, and then one, say, here, just for these IO units, like, arms to grab them from. And then we need to hook this guy up, so we should probably move this guy, actually. Uh, it doesn't matter what side you have, this guy only just has to be on a side. So, I think we're going to put this over here, just so it's closer to a pipe that we can connect it to. I'm hoping I can just connect it like... Oh, jeez, we're losing pre losing pressure. There we go. <laughs> That's like the ugliest setup ever, but it works. It works. We have some pressure. We have a very small window uh, for that to work there. But all we need to do now is grab ourselves a flipping another empty PCB. So, okay, so I've gone ahead and made myself three more empty PCBs. And now all we've kind of got to do is wait for this to get into the green zone, which it is almost there. So once it's almost there, you can put your assembly, a little recipe here. You can grab... What's... It's... Why? Why? Why are you... Um... Okay, I think there seems to be a little bit of a bug there. Let's try... Let's try this. What's that about? That's, a, that's an odd bug. Okay, well, careful, guys. Don't put it in any of these slots. Oh, just... Is it just that one slot? Don't put it in... Oh, no, wait. Yeah, don't put it in this slot. I seem to have found a bug there. Don't put it in this slot. But uh, once this is in, this basically tells the uh, the assembly controller what it's doing. It's basically telling it to make these empty PCBs into normal PCBs. And as you can see, it says assembly controller, assembly platform, two I.O. units, import and export, which we'll do in a second, and an, uh, an assembly laser. So at the minute, we have all that stuff, but our I.O. units are just uh, they're just both blue. What we need to do is, using our pneumatic wrench, which we can charge up in our charging station if we so wish. Wait, stop. Stop. There we go. <laughs> what you need to do is just right-click on one of them, and that will make it into an orange one. And you can see this is now says standby. So I think if we... I think orange means input. So if I put one in of these in here now, I think... I might be wrong. Let's try put it in this chest here. Is that right? There we go. Look at this. So blue is input, and orange is output. But now what it's going to do is... It's got a really cool animation. Now it is pretty much the slowest thing in the world ever. 
<laughs> so it's still we're still not going to be making these empty PCBs hand over fist. We're still not going to be making them that fast. But we're going to be making them a little bit faster than we were before. I'm going to take these blocks of charcoal out because I don't want this thing to explode. Uh, we might even have to let a bit of pressure out in a second. But uh, basically, it's going to take that. It's going to put it onto here really slowly. There we go. It's going to clamp it in. This laser is going to come around again really slowly. It's got a bit of a like, warning laser sign there. Don't look directly at it. <laughs> and it's going to like etch some stuff into this guy. Here we go, really slowly. It's going to start etching things up. And then once that's finished, this other arm is going to grab it, throw it into this chest, and we will have basically done the process of putting it in a light box, put it into etching acid, and doing all that stuff. So we really don't need these two anymore for making this stuff. Um, so again, it's still really slow. We're still not going to be making these hand over fist, but it's a little bit faster than it was before. I'm just going to really quickly, like break and replace one of these pressure tubes so we don't like explode um no we lost a bit um no, it seems to have bounced back quite nicely actually we didn't seem to lose any pressure at all almost um it's kind of odd i guess Okay, but anyway, look, there we go. We have ourselves an unassembled PCB. We've still got to put it, we've still got to craft it up with all these other things, but we are one step closer to fully automating this guy and making it, just making our lives just a little bit easier when it comes to all this stuff. Basically, this is just saves it. This is just a time saver. We no longer have to wait the five minutes for the light box and the five minutes for the etching acid and the five minutes for everything else. Uh, it'll do it all by itself. You can speed this up. You can actually speed pretty much everything up um, in regards to this stuff. You can make the air pressure uh, produce compressed pressure rise air faster by putting in a speed upgrade you can do the same here by putting in a speed upgrade uh, you can't do any of these these are all controlled by the controller right there but uh, the downside is we should have a speed controller i think we got one as a quest reward once but i can't find it but uh, the speed reward here requires uh, quite a lot of stuff it's quite expensive i think it's been like inflated for for this mod pack to make it harder to get but you need a potion of swiftness which is not too bad apart from the fact that we need sugar and as of the, this moment in time we actually don't have any sugar or any way i don't think of getting sugar we can get eggs, we can get wheat, we can get milk from our cows. We just need sugar. So uh, if anyone does know how to get sugar in this mod pack, please tell me because I have absolutely no idea. I am seriously getting scared about this pressure situation. I'm just going to let that go. Don't blow up. If you blow up on me, I'm going to cry. Stop. Stop with the pressure right now. There we go. I've, <laughs> I don't wanna, I'm going to have to move this stuff because I don't want to lose this. This is the last thing I want to lose, like, ever. I think this is a more accurate representation of the pressure. I think if we were to reconnect it now, it would bounce back up to this. So I'm going to I'm gonna close it up. Actually, I'm going to close loop it here. Because uh, it, it does actually have enough pressure. I think. Is that going to bounce back up? If it bounces back up to there, it actually does have enough pressure to continue working. It's just going to run out pretty soon. But we only have one more to do. Oh, no, we actually... Are we done? We're almost done. This one just needs a bit more pressure to get working, and that'll be good to go. So yeah, if anyone knows how to make uh, sugarcane or how we can get sugarcane, uh, be sure to tell me in the comment section down below. I would love to know so we can actually get some stuff going. But I think with that, I know it's been a short episode, guys, but I think with that, I'm going to call it there. What I want to do next episode, episode 20, uh, there will be a world download link, but I think what we're going to do is we're going to head on out across this road, and if we have a quick look into the quest book back here at the basic survival section of the quest book, um, what has gone before, there is actually a new quest, which is um, a kind of new mechanic to the hardcore questing mod. Um, it's distance, proximity. So if we go 802 meters away, these are the coordinates. If we go to these coordinates, which I'm going to assume are, are over here. I'm not 100% sure about that. Um, but I'm going to assume they're over there. I did see somewhere on uh, the Reddit page that these might be the wrong coordinates. So I'll have to look into that. But we're going to follow this road. We're going to find an abandoned city. And we're going to see about getting maybe some more of these uh, more of these bricks here. Uh, again, somebody in the comment section did try to tell me that the, you can still make these. Uh, you can't. If we go to at Tinker's Steelworks. Uh, it's Tinker's steelworks uh, if you look these are made using scorched uh, bricks which are made using bricks and seared stone but seared stone can no longer be made by putting stone into a smeltery cobblestone the smeltery will no longer make seared stone you can only do it using seared bricks or seared brick seared brick or seared bricks and seared bricks can be made by smelting drought which no longer has a recipe so none of this stuff works anymore which is just flipping fantastic uh, i could do a quick uh, quick test here to see if this does work i don't think it does but if it does, it's kind of cool. Um, let's drink some cola, because cola's amazing. <laughs> there we go. Uh, that might have helped us out just a little bit. Can we eat some toast? 
Let's give this a quick try. I'm pretty sure it doesn't work. Uh, but then again, I haven't tested it. I'm just going by the uh, the word of the form and stuff. Uh, yeah, no, look at that. Cannot Can no longer smelt this into that. So we're going to have to go and search the ruins of a city in order to do that. So what I'm probably going to do is I'll probably stock up on like bread, toast, all the fruits uh, and all the fruit juices that I can. Get myself a bunch of water. Get rid of all this junk that we don't need. I'll probably just take my, my pickaxe, my sword and my hatchet. And we're going to head on out to the city and see what we can find. And hopefully we'll get some, uh, some sweet loot. And some pretty cool stuff. Maybe a bunch of circuit boards. That'd be really nice. Uh, is this? Is this? Oh, we're just a little bit too low on pressure. Little tiny bit. If we throw that back in, uh, it might pump back up a little bit, and and this should finish off. So with that, guys, I'm gonna end the episode there. If you did enjoy the video, be sure to like, and I will see you next time for episode 20 of Crash Landing. Bye bye.